Hey, thanks for joining me. Uh, today I'm going to do something a little different. I had a, uh, a comment on one of my videos asking if I could go over like inking tools and things like that. And because um, this person was saying that they're uh, interested in kind of doing comics as a hobby on their own and kind of don't know what the difference is between a bunch of inking tools and what to use and wondered if I could, you know, give some information. So I'm like, you know what? Sure, absolutely. I, um, when I started this channel, for those of you who are, you know, have been following it consistently and watches the, the live streams I do, uh, my um, live stream streaming uh, best friend, Jessica, she's the one who actually kind of put the idea in my head like a year or two ago that I should do stuff like this, like process stuff, how to do it. I even have a screenshot saved on my phone of the text message where she's like, you could do videos on penciling and tools and papers and inking supplies and this and that. And, and I always kept that in the back of my head. And then I, when I started the channel, obviously I was going to start talking comics, but I always intended to do like how to videos. And I, I've done like maybe one and I just kind of, I don't know, they're kind of intimidating because, you know, there's so many artists out there. There's one or two professionals who watch this on occasion at least. And it's kind of intimidating to be like, this is how this tool works. This is what you do. But I have to just get over myself. Um, so I'm just going to show some various things that are just the tools that I use and the things that work for me, um, assuming they, you know, if, if they're working, if, if my artwork is producing anything any good, you know, hopefully that um, I, I'm not kind of seeming like a hypocrite. I've seen people doing, I've seen videos of people doing like how-to videos with their art and I mean, they, they can't draw at all. And I don't know, maybe that's me. I, I don't want to be that guy, but I might be. But either way, I'm just going to throw it out, throw myself out there a little bit and we're going to do um, a few art supply kind of here's what I have, this is what I use, and this is what works for me, and give some kind of tips. And I did a quick drawing here. Uh, this is about a 30 minute sketch. I just went searching on Instagram. And, um, you know, I've, I've said this before, whenever I wanna draw something quick and simple, but kind of fun, a female figure is just always an easy go-to because it's long flowing smooth lines, which is a good way to show some basic uses of inking supplies, just easy flowing lines with some curves. You can get some line weights in there. And then I put this box behind her um, as a designy element to show kind of how to rule out some lines. And then in the background, there can be some textures that go on too. So that's what we're going to do. So, uh, you know, I've been sitting here and, um, you know, I've got my own pages I've been working on. I, I was doing this on a stream recently. I was actually going to do my inking demos on this thing, but I haven't quite tightened up everything enough to be completed. And it's kind of hard to do inking because this phone that I'm recording on is right in front of my face where I should be looking down. So I'm kind of off to the side when I'm touching anything and so I'm going to draw something fresh that I'm not really concerned about screwing up. So, you know, I even started another rough drawing there. And, you know, I've been doing my own comic pages. These are a few of the pages I've been doing recently. If anybody that follows me on Instagram, these might look familiar. So just to see some of the inking that I do. This is a combination of um, ink in a bottle with a Hunt 102 and a brush and technical pens. It's just a bunch of varying different types of tools that just kind of depends on what I need to draw and what my mood is. And I don't know. It's just I, I kind of bounce back and forth between what I want to use. But um, ultimately, I think the only thing that matters in the end is the final work which I think most people would agree with. So it doesn't matter what you use, you know, um, you, if you use technical pens or bottles of ink or digital devices, who cares? As long as the final result is interesting, then off you go. So first off, I pencil, um, I do most of my rough penciling these days with this Kohler Ace blue pencil. Um, I've known about them for a long time, but I finally just ordered a bunch of, a uh, whole big pack of them and just to start using them consistently. And I love these to death. This blue pencil, just my, my line work flows out of my hand so easily with this blue pencil. But I also have these um, just regular standard wood pencils that I use. Um, I got to say, if you draw with a pencil, these things that I found, uh, these like um, pencil extenders, because once you get a pencil nub down to just a short little thing, it's so hard to hold on to. I hate drawing with this little tiny thing. So I found these and 
it's just the greatest thing. It extends it and keeps it sturdy in my hand. Sometimes I'll have two of these with like, I'll get two wood pencils or two blue pencils and with the sharp tip so I can sit here and draw and then I can just switch over to a different one and then come back to it like that. So that's what I pencil with. But this one just so far, this drawing is just the blue pencil. And then I know I'm going to talk about inking, but I'm going to do, go over a couple other things. I have at the moment, kind of ironically, a whole variety of erasers. My local art store used to have this very particular kind of eraser that I would buy all the time and they stopped carrying it. And I never paid attention to the brand. I just knew what I wanted. So I went to a different art store and bought several different types of erasers, trying to find the one that I liked most. And I think this is the closest to it. So I've got these different kind of erasers, including the kneaded eraser, which is this gummy kind of squishy thing that you can, you know, pull off. I'll, I'll, we're actually gonna demonstrate this here very soon. Um, and I have also like, I've got another couple fresh ones ready to go. Um, these things, they, they, they'll kind of last forever. I've never seen them like actually die and crumble and fade, but you, you end up collecting so much debris or whatever you're erasing up, it just, it's, it's gets kind of, I don't know, it'll still erase, but it'll eventually start leaving some marks after the, the stroke of the erase. And so I ended up tossing one ahead recently and just got out a new one because it's nicer when it's, you know, it's better when it's nice and fresh. Um, so I have those. I also have an electric eraser. Let me get this point up there. Got a little eraser tool, just a little vibrator, like let's be for real. But um, this you can get in there and you can, I've seen artists like shave the eraser point to a nice tip and you can get in there and make some really fine erasing lines. Um, I don't use it, I mean, I think that's for when you're doing fine pencil work. I, I don't do something like that, but sometimes it's nice to have this thing just to like get in there and get a few kind of quick places in a tight spot. So I've got the uh, eraser tool. So. And then I've just got a whole slew of different supplies. Um, as far as inking, I do one of two different things, either technical pens or ink uh, in a bottle. So this is the brand that I use, Doc, Dr. Phil Martin's Black Star Matte. That's the great, that's the good stuff. Uh, watching on Jonathan Galapian's um, YouTube page, you know, he inks uh, Greg Capullo. Um, he listed this as the ink that he likes. And I went and found, I will happen to run across it in art. So I'm like, oh shit, that's the one that he likes. So I tried it. And after trying all different manners of inks, this is the one that I like. I like it a lot. And then I use the Hunt 102. Now this nib is approaching end of life. In fact, it might already be dead. I can still get a few lines out of it, but it's, it's, um, the tip is not holding a sharp point anymore. So I don't know how many people are ever going to bother trying to use this. I think they're fun, but they're really hard. Um, you have to also make sure that you, I, I have to remind myself to keep pulling the tip in and out of this thing because if you dip it in the ink and play around with it, the ink will start sealing the nib in the tip here and then you can't get it out. I mean, it doesn't take much to get a grip on it and pull it out and break the seal, but this little tip is not sturdy at all. It's a very fragile little thing. So uh, there's been times I can't pull it out by hand. So I had to get a tool like a pair of pliers or something and it doesn't take much to just crush the thing and then you snap the tip off and then the base is lodged down in the hole and then your whole thing is just fucked up so I just had to learn to remind myself to constantly pull these in and out just to keep it from sealing itself in there these are fun we're going to demonstrate that a little bit here and then I've got some other ones um, with some other different kinds of tips on them for different kind of ink lines like this one and this one here I, you know, they, each one gives a kind of different kind of texture and a different kind of line. It's, each one's unique. The Hunt 102 that I was just showing you, this guy, I got a bunch of refills ready to go. You know, I'm not hurting to have any. So I've got the refills of those ready to go. And then I've just got a bunch of supplies. I I do it kind of a dumb way, but when I ink with the brush, I, I buy cheap brushes, just cheap garbage. And then I'm, if I'm lucky enough, I can get a decent life out of a brush before it finally just explodes and dies. So I buy these packages of these cheap brushes. This is one I saw for really cheap. I'm hoping a couple of these things will have some life that I can get out of it for a little bit rather than buying an expensive brush that may not work very well. So that's some of the supplies I have there. Um, 
And then I just have more ink pens still fresh in the package, ready to go. More pencils ready to go. I do the, um, um, the hell are these called? Copic markers. I've got the warm grays and the cool grays. I think Adam Hughes really popularized these and now everyone does them. I've got these ink cartridge refills for this um, pocket pen that I'll show you that is really fun, but these are ink cartridge refills for that. So I've just, I got all the supplies ready to go. I've even got a second bottle of ink. Like this is the one I just showed you. I got another one I just picked up just the other day, ready to go. So all the supplies, just all the stuff off to the side of my desk. And then I got the technical pens, which I'm gonna show you once we get started drawing. So as far as using the technical pens, if that's what you wanna do, or the, uh, well, I'm gonna show them all. But um, to start, I do this drawing in this light blue. Now you don't have to, I don't always, but um, you know, I, I'm not putting the heavy, a heavy blue line on here when I'm drawing. I, I try to keep a light touch. Like when I'm sketching, you know, you can keep a really light line, but then you can really push on and get a thick, dark, you know, so you can, this is why it makes it fun because you can get a really light blue line there or a thick one, but you don't want any of this extra lead or color or whatever on your final page if you're doing traditional drawing like I do. So many people do digital. All this has to come out, so you have to clean it up after the fact. And the less cleanup after the fact when you put it on a computer, in my experience, you know, the less time wasted on that, the better. So what I'm getting at is I'll take this kneaded eraser, once I get the drawing that I want, and I'll just do a, a light kind of erase over it, pulling off a good amount of that blue, but still leaves a light kind of ghostly figure that you can see that you can ink over. Like it's still there, but I just, and, and I don't want any of this the lead or the the blue pencil to, I, I mean, it's not really a huge deal, but when you're putting ink over it, sometimes the, the lead and the ink could interact sometimes. It's not really a huge deal, but I just feel like the less that's on there, the better. So simple enough. So we're just going to start doing some inking. So, um, you know what, I'm going to start with the, the bottle of ink in the Hunt 102, the, the one that I had that's kind of dead, the dead tip that I've got on there. We'll see what kind of lines I can get out of it. Um, it's a little bit of a tricky tool to use. Um, in a way, I want to say I, I, there's easier ways to ink, but I just like the old school traditional approach. So I get my bottle out. And then again, my tip, I can see it on here that the the, there's two little points that come together at the tip of this, and that makes a point. And when it gets kind of end of life, they're they're kind of like splitting like this or crooked like this. It's not quite there, but it's getting there. It's not a sharp point anymore. But it's a tricky tool, and the thing about using this, and um, you know, it, it the, the tricky thing is once you lay the ink down, it it tends to leave a a wet line that you have to work around because it's it's so easy to put a line somewhere and then move over here and you dip your hand into it and then you just smeared it you got ink on your hand and then you're putting little imprints of it all over your page so you have to be very aware of where you're inking and then make sure once you get to a certain point you can't cross over move to another part and let the ink line dry up over here somewhere else so i'm kind of curious as to I'm not sure how the line's gonna start coming out of this. Now I know what I'm gonna do on this page in these corners of this box, I'm gonna have some texture kind of fading out towards the figure, but in the corners is gonna be straight black. So I'll, I'll use this as like a testing place just to see how the ink starts coming out of the brush or the, the nib here. And so it's flowing, cause I'm gonna blacken that all in anyway. So I'm not worried about, you know, using it as a test spot or you can just have another piece of paper off to the side, but I'm not going to do her face with this because I want the face to be technically as precise as I can make it and it's not a great nib. So I'll do some other these other areas where a long flowing line is needed. So let's just see. Sometimes you have to get it to just start. You have to okay, get the ink flowing and then it'll just start coming off the, the nib. Now you can press harder or lighter and the, the, you can get a wider line or a thinner line. 
Sorry, this is weird to try and talk and draw at the same time when I'm trying to be kind of particular about the line. Now, if you can see here, on this line I just did here, see how it's kind of thicker here towards the bottom, a little thinner up at the top? That's because I'm applying different pressure. Now, I'm not going straight down, I'm kind of at an angle. And you just have to use it to learn which way to kind of press and flex the tip. The more you flex it, you can get a wider line. And the thing with these pens, obviously, with such a point, is you can you can either only kind of come one direction, kind of come back, but you can't go up because of the nib will dig into the paper and jab it and stab it. And that sucks. So you have to be kind of particular about how you go about putting your lines down. And then if you can see right there, I'm hoping it looks the same, but you can see it's kind of still wet that line. So you have to be careful where you put your hand. As I talk, I spittle on the paper. So there's just different kind of textures and lines that you can get with this tool specifically. As I understand it, this is the tool that, I mean, I think it, all kind of inkers always used it, but from what I seem to hear, and um, I don't think it'll be a stretch to imagine that Chuck Gibson, if you're uh, you're watching this, sir, you worked with Jim Lee and Scott Williams specifically. My understanding is that Scott Williams kind of popularized kind of a certain inking method with the Hunt 102. I seem to have heard that and gave it, there's a distinctive kind of ink line that a lot of people think of as that sharp, crisp Image Comics inking look with all the cross hatching. And it seems like they say, that Scott Williams kind of pioneered that in a big way, as opposed to just using a brush, which I think was more of the traditional way of doing things. Um, so Chuck, if you're watching this, I kind of, I, you, you tend to watch a lot of my videos now and you're a former Wildstorm inker. I'd be really curious to hear any of your thoughts or opinions or, you know, insights that you have on any of this. But so it's just about just getting used to the flex of this nib and what it can do, it, it's, it's a little easier to just do these long flowing lines like this. It's when you get into a place where you want to start doing some cross hatching that things become tricky. And I am, I've been using this tool for a long time, but I didn't know how to use it properly for a long time. I watched a video tutorial by inker uh, Joe Weems and he was doing all these kind of lines and flexing and sharp points. I'm like, how the hell does he get that out of this tool? But a problem I was doing for so long is um, I only ever had like one of these and I was very poor back in the day. And so I didn't wanna, I was very, very delicate with it. So I wouldn't flex it because I didn't wanna break it and I didn't have anything else to, to uh, replace it with. So, and that's an understandable mindset, but you're not using the tool to its maximum efficiency. And so, uh, you know, financial ability to supply yourself with the tools that you want, obviously factor in a lot to, that's why, like I showed, I have several of these ready to go. I can just order them from Amazon really easily. You know, we're a very lucky first world country where you can just push a few buttons on your phone and have stuff show right up. Um, I also recently discovered the Inker uh, Livesay, uh, is, is his last name, is it John? John Live say, I think, and I was watching him do some inking on his Instagram page, and he was holding this tool in an entirely different way I've ever seen. He had this like rigid up and down, and this might again my nib is kind of dead, so it's not gonna do what I want it to do. But he's doing these sharp snaps. God, yeah, because my my tool's dead. It's um. See lines like that? That's kind of starting to show kind of how some of the lines that you can get out of this tool if you learn how to use it right. And I'm still, you know, I'm not that great with it, but it's fun. I use it more because it's a challenge and it's fun. And I'm just stubborn. There's a lot of other tools to use that are a lot easier, um, but I, I want to get the lines that, if, if, if you can get a certain snap out of this thing, it looks unlike anything else, and that's what I'm, I'm always chasing. So anyway, that's kind of a quick, the Hunt 102, it's fun, I like it, uh, not very good with it, 
The, the next one is using a brush. Now this is again, one of these cheap brushes that I find. Um, and, but the, these cheap brushes tend to, I tend to be able to get a certain amount of good lines out of them for a little while and then they eventually die. But once they stop holding their point and then they become like these guys, I still keep these to fill in big black areas or you could get some really interesting like dabbing textures out of them or a dry brush effect when you can get some ink and kind of rub off the excess on another page and then just do a dry brush effect. There's tons of use for old brushes. Don't just because they stop carrying a point, don't just toss them. I've got a big old, shit, dropping things here. I've got a huge collection of old brushes that I've held on to for all kinds of things. It's, in fact, it's way too many. I need to thin it out, but it's not taking up too much space. But anyway, a brush, you can kind of get similar lines like the Hunt 102, where you can get sharp snaps and points and things like that. Um, the thing with the brush is that it gives you a longer, more fluid line, I believe. Um, let's see what I can get out of this. Because you can do variations in line weight too. Like I'm going to start here. Like you get a nice thin line and then you can just press down on it and get a thicker line and then go back to a thin. Can you see how it's thinner here and then thicker there? It's, I mean, it's not a great example. Um, but you can get a long swooping, now that didn't go quite the directions I wanted it to. This phone is in my way. I'm like, like I said before, I'm kind of sitting crooked here. So there's, you know, you can get long flowing lines and change up the line weights on them as you go. find myself holding my breath you know it's like when you're trying to do something really kind of cautious and it tends to go for a long not a long while but um I mean the brush holds a decent amount of ink when you load it up like these lines are not the smoothest lines ever uh, awkward position here but So it get, there's there's kind of an idea. I just dip it. Now I'm doing something that I'm going to give a tip for anybody that uses brushes that I'm breaking my own rule. Ideally, you don't want to dip the ink so far into it that it, the ink comes up to the top where the, the housing holds the bristles because the ink starts flowing up inside where the bristles are and that's what starts ruining your brush. And I'm just dipping it straight into the bottle. I can't really judge. And it's a cheap brush and I don't care. And I've just been doing this for too long that I don't give a shit if I lose a a cheap brush. But um, if you got a nice brush, you only want to load it up halfway, two thirds of the way, something to that effect, which is something I learned not too long ago by watching uh, Sandra Hope, I believe it was, doing some inking on her Instagram page, giving really good advice. But so the brush, a little random hair on the tip of it. You can just get some nice flowing lines out of it. So, I mean, I hope this is giving kind of an example of what you can do with this thing. And then you have a practice of, um, you got to get some long, sharp snaps. Now, they'll talk about don't, you don't want to use your wrist, like pivot at your elbow to give yourself some long, sharp snaps. And I think it was Joe Weems I was watching who was talking about how he doesn't like to, if I'm remembering correctly, when he's doing his inking line, he doesn't like to bring the line towards him. It feels like it's constricted. Like there's a, there's a finite amount of space between his hand and his own body. And there's just this finite space. If he can take the line and pull, push it away from him, it feels more open. You can get a nice cleaner snap. It feels more open is what he said. When I read that, 
I was like, oh, okay, that that makes sense. Um, and it, it's just getting like feathering snaps in your lines is just something that you just have to practice. And see what you can kind of come up with. And those are big kind of chunky ones. Um, but, you know, you're getting the idea. I, I did, The figure I drew here had a, has a heavy shadow on the backside. Um, I, you know, you could just take and sometimes I'll outline the shadow and then fill it in like this. And then you'll see a lot of professional artists that do things traditionally. There'll be an X indicated by pencil or the ink. Like, that's where you fill in the black. Now, this is where you can also see how um, doing digital artwork has its advantages in that you don't have to worry about brushes failing you. You don't have to worry about getting ink all over the page. When you have an area to fill in, you can just, like, select that area, click a button, and it's filled in black. So... Again, I get the advantages of digital. I just, I'm not going to invest in the, the, the devices. I'm not interested. I just like doing things by hand. And um, I'm just, I'm just being stubborn. I'm not saying that digital is not good. I'm just, this is what I like to do. So that's kind of some simple, a couple kind of flowing lines with an inking brush. Again, whenever, uh, one thing that I learned, I uh, I spoke to inker Dexter Vines at a comic convention and he was explaining to me, and I was always trying to get these, how do you get these feathering lines um, where it's thinner and thicker? And I always thought that you'd start it at the thick point and end at the sharp, small point. And he's like, oh, hell no. No, you do it exactly opposite. You go from thin to thick. And it felt completely counterintuitive. I'm like, how and why? But he said his exact words were to me were that when he does the thick part first and does his snap leaving off the 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 um, the thinner part of it, he's like, I don't know where that line's gonna go. The the brushes, my hand, it could just trail off anywhere. He has more control starting at the thin point. So um let's see if I can do an example of it here. So and he was right. Once I started trying it, again, I'm no professional, so it's not gonna look amazing, but like if you start thin and then you just kind of add some pressure to the to the brush see how we get some thinner lines going to thick it and if you get a nice good control snap of your hand it suddenly when like when i came home from that comic convention that day like f 6 years ago something like that I immediately sat down with the brush and I tried it. Now, what I did didn't look very good, but I could tell instantly that I could see that that's where that, uh, that's, that was the solution. I just had to practice. So I think brush is just this beautiful, wonderful tool. If you've got a good one, you've got some good ink, you've got some good paper, and you're just vibing and working, it works great. So that's my little quick brush tutorial. Now, see, I've already got ink on my hands. For anybody who's watched my channel for a long time, you'll see me talking and pointing and doing pages. And I had this ink glob on my hand because I'd be drawing a lot. Then I'd stop and I'd start reviewing a comic and I didn't give a fuck enough to go and like clean the ink off my finger. Who cares? But um, I, don't know, you can, I don't know if you can tell, I've got like a little indent in my finger right here because I'm always got that brush. Laid in that hand, brush, pencil, whatever. So anyway, um, but yeah, you'll get ink all over your hands. So you got to watch where you're going with your lines. So I'm going to do a kind of a quick cleanup of this brush. I'm going to set it aside. I'm going to close up my bottle of ink. I cannot stress that enough. Put the fucking lid back on your ink bottle because you'll tip it over, you'll bump it, you'll forget it, or you'll let it dry out. And um, you may not want that to be the case. So close up those bottles. So now, the, the first thing I'm doing now is I'm looking at it, I'm tilting it in the light to see if I can get some reflection off it to see if there's any place on here where there's wet ink. Because if there is, 
and then you touch it or something like that, you'll just ruin your whole thing. So it's all dry. What's interesting is the Hunt 102s with that sharp metal point, you can feel the texture of the ink on this, where I did this arm to start, especially on this hand. I can feel each one of these lines, like a braille almost, like you can feel it. But these brush lines, you can't feel anything because the, the, the brush just lays the ink on the page. That Hunt 102 like grooves it and like, grinds it into the paper or something. Can't feel these, can't feel these, but you can feel it. I've done entire pages with the Hunt 102 and you can just feel the texture on it. It's really weird. But also, um, whenever you ink, if you do inking with wet ink like I'm saying here, or even with technical pens, for God's sakes, wait to erase. Just wait. You might think it's done. You might get in a hurry. You can't wait to like, you finished your inking, but you want to pull all that extra pencil off and see the final black and white. But you will hit some wet glob of ink and poof, streak it across. And if you're lucky, you'll, it'll go somewhere where you can fix it and clean it up. But you might just streak something right across the face that you spent all this time on. And you'll be so mad. I had to learn that way young. Um, like, just wait. I, I, I taught myself when I was younger. I'm a little bit more understanding now. And I'm, I, I haven't had an accident like that in a while. But when I was younger, like a late teenager, I taught myself to, like, take my pages and put them aside. And I'll erase them tomorrow. So anyway, that is the old school analog, you know, traditional Hunt 102s and brushes. The other tools that I use... I'm digging them out right here. There's a couple versions of this, but this is what Frank Cho uses. Microns. These are great. These are really cool. Come in a variety of um, thicknesses. There's also these pit pens, Faber-Castell pit pens. I prefer the pit pen only in as much as when I first start using it, and um, I heard Richard Friend, another great inker, on his page refer to them as when you first open them up, they're really juicy. The ink is just like, you can tell it's full of ink and it's wet and the lines are flowing really beautifully. But it seems like to me, more than these, they they don't dry up exactly, but the, the juicy part of it is gone. And sometimes I'll start drawing and I have to like coax the ink out of the tip and then once it starts flowing you can get a line but it's not a big nice juicy flowing ink line like it was when it started so i like these best when they're brand new but they tend to run out of that juicy factor really quick i i, and I think i could probably say juicy a few more times if you wanted me to so i like these but also one of the other downsides is it seems to be my experience is once you draw with these um, and you put some lines down and then you have to come over and erase, the, the eraser will pull some of this ink off. If you had like 100% black before, it might be only 75% black now because the eraser pulls some ink off. It seems to me that these don't come off nearly as bad, but I don't, they're not as fun when they're fresh as those other ones. So each tool has its ups and downs. Now I bought a pack recently that had these sizes. It's kind of faded off on this one that I'm using the most. It's a 08 and you got a 10 and a 12. The smaller the number, the smaller the tip. So I was using this 12, this big thip, thick nub right there to rule out borders. And then most of my drawing, when I'm drawing figures and stuff, I use this eight. And then I've got this one. It's like a 005, very tiny, very microscopic little tip. So it's also kind of fragile, a fragile little tip. So you have to be kind of gentle with it, as opposed to some of these others that um, got a thicker kind of tip that you're not really worried about. So I just, let me show you an example. When I started drawing comics on my own, I just like, like everyone else, you just want to draw the cool shit, right? I don't want to draw panel borders, but you just need to learn to find a way just to be comfortable with it. You just got to do it. And it makes everything look nicer. So I'm, I've got this desk. It's got the little lip here at the bottom so you can put your page flat on that. And then you get, you got to have some triangle rulers, right angle rulers with a nice smooth edge. Now, somehow, for some reason, I seem to always get these and I always bump up the edges on this. And this edge is really kind of bumpy as opposed to this long one, which is nice and smooth still. And this one's like flawless because I never use these to draw on, but it still works enough. But I'll just set the, you know, pencil out your borders and then take your pen. I mean, this is pretty obvious stuff, but 
Make sure your page is flat and level on your lip and then put the your ruler on there. And then let's just rule in a border. I'll come down here. over and that what I like about this ruler is it's long enough to like I draw an 11 by 17 this thing is long enough to reach more than halfway up the page so if I got a weird kind of long panel I can usually kind of extend and get it all the way across the page if I need and then we're just gonna connect up these tips again if this is digital you'd be done already but I don't do digital, so I'm showing old school. So simple little, simple little border, right? Just end up doing your whole pages like this. I uh, like, let me grab one of these. Oh my gosh. Like, you know, I'm doing all these borders the same way, just by hand. It's, it's not the funnest thing in the world, but it doesn't really take that long. You just have to discipline yourself just to sit down and do it. So anyway, that's the thicker tip, the number 12 on these microns. And then I'm just going to use the ones that I've been using the most. I've got the 8 and the 005. Now I'm going to start with the 005 on her face because I want this face to, you know, I, I don't want to screw up these features on her face. So I'm going to do the best that I can. Um, at least on like the delicate parts, the eyes, the nostrils, the lips, and then you can um, beef up the lines a little bit later. The, the one drawback to these pens, as opposed to the Hunt 102 and the brush, is that it just leaves a dead line. You can't make a thicker line. You can't do this shit with these pens like this. So if you want a thin to thick feathering line you have to like build up the line and like fill it in or you can draw your line but then you can you have to go back over you have to sculpt it basically so you're going over and over and over it to get that feathering look and some people may not mind that it's sure a lot quicker when you can do it in a single stroke just kind of like i was doing on some of these you can just come down light touch press a little harder get a thicker line go back to a lighter touch get a thin line you could do it a single stroke but with these damn things if you want to get this kind of a look you have to sculpt the lines up to get it to look the way you want and i feel like the more i go over it the more it starts it, it can get it can just start looking rougher and rougher so, um, but I'm going to start with this really thin one. I'm going to start with her eye here. And again, I've penciled really lightly and roughly. Um, so if you're looking to ink over somebody, um, honestly, you have to know how to draw. You can't be an inker if you don't know how to draw. And um, I know some people, I know one guy in particular, he just, he's an older guy and he loves to ink and he is no good. Um because he can't really draw. He's not that good. And so his inks ruin every pencil pages that he touches. And he's the nicest, sweetest guy I've ever known. He's an old guy and he's just having the time of his life, but he's not a good inker. But, you know, sometimes I'm like, you need to do this, you, you shouldn't do this, but I don't wanna ruin his fun or hurt his feelings. He's having a great time, so it's better just left alone. But yeah, I hope you can kind of see, I mean, I know there's some distance here, but that this really fine point gives a nice fine line that you can control really easily. And so you've got a lot of control. And I am building up these lines in places here and there. I'm making some artistic choices. That's my whole point. If you're an inker and you get loose pencils, you have to interpret the drawing to make it look right. And if you can't draw, if you're not an artist anyway, you you shouldn't be inking because you're going to ruin someone else's pencils. Um, like good inks can't fix bad pencils, but bad inks can ruin good pencils. So you have to know what you're doing. You have to be objective and able to see 
what you're doing right and wrong. So, again, so if you can see, I, I do a basic line to kind of chart the path that I want the line to go, and then I can go back over it and build it up to give it some line weight. This little thin micron is a great little tool. Again, it, it forces you to sculpt the lines to, that you're building up, but you know, I'm getting some, I, I, I couldn't do this line work with the brush that I had and I could get something close with the Hunt 102 with a brand new one. But that's the nice thing about these is that you can just bust these out and kind of mix up the tools that you're gonna use And again, I'm not a professional artist. I have never worked for anybody but myself. And if you're watching this and going like, man, this guy's full of crap, you're right. I am not, I'm just a, like I say, I like to use the word enthusiastic amateur. I did get paid for a gig for the first time recently. I got paid 600 bucks for a cup, for some pages I did for a book. So does that make me a professional artist? Is that, some people use that as the, uh, like the threshold, like you're getting paid for your own work. Does that make me a professional artist? I don't know. Anyway, so that's using that really thin uh, thin tip here. And now I'm going to bust out the one that's a little thicker. It's the smallest size I have next up. Um, and I've indicated on this face some places where there's some shadows on her cheekbone. I've got her ear here. You can just do a basic outline of the ear and just start getting those. Ears are weird. They have the weirdest shapes inside the, the ear canals there. It's just such a weird thing. And honestly, it's the easiest part of inking, in a way, is, I think, just doing these long, simple, flowing lines. It's when you get into some cross-hatching to define form, give you values of grays that things become hard and you suddenly all this work you do here, you can just ruin everything and it's over um, because you don't know how to, you haven't got your cross hatching quite right. And um, this is a part that I always struggle with is like, I want, I don't want this hard black shape. In, in fact, on all of these, I, I kind of intend to do some cross hatching to kind of fade out these lines. Now, this is an artistic choice. I've seen it done all different ways, but it's always kind of a trick to start doing some cross-hatching, especially on a woman's face, a young woman's beautiful face. If you start throwing cross-hatching lines, you can fuck it up and start making it look weird and making her look old. But um, you can just start doing some simple... Simple things like that, maybe. And then you can fill in the black. Like I was saying, you, X's indicate black. So again, I got the face kind of done right there. Um, so that's just kind of the simple kind of breakdown of the technical pens. They're fun. They're easy to control. You don't make messes. You can't, you know, you you can't make big messes like you do with the bottles of ink and the brushes and the Hunt 102. Um, but there there are some limitations. There are some drawbacks, like every tool. That's why I've got so many. Um, so I've got, like I said, the old school, the the metal nib, the brushes, these technical pens. I also have. I found this random pack of brushes, or rather ink tools, not this one. Um, one's missing, that's okay. Um, where'd it go? Ah, oh, who cares? I, I, it's usually a pack of three. I've got another one right here, here we go. I find these packs of these brushes like this, and they come with these three different types of brushes inside here. It says MB, BB, and FB. I saw like fine brush, so it has this little tiny point, which will give you kind of the same thing like a small tip. You can get a nice thin line and you can press on it and I can get some decent-ish feathering lines out of it. So that one was fun to use. And then the middle one, I thought this would be the one I liked the most. This is the one I liked the least. It's this fat, stupid tip. Doesn't hold a line very well. I just use these to fill in blacks. I'll just like, I don't care what I'm doing with the brush tip on this. I'll just fill it in. 
Um, that's fine. But the one that I thought that I would like the least is ended up being the one I liked the most. This big, thick, chunky guy. I'm like, I won't get any kind of fine control out of that. Are you kidding me? What is this thing? But once I started using it, um, I, I use these at conventions all the time. This is what I take when I go to conventions is this thing because it's it's a good quality of ink. It's not like a Sharpie that'll fade, but you, I can get a nice thin line and then press hard and get a nice thick line and go back to a nice thin line. For as much as this chunky, weird, fat tip has on it, it gives me a decent control of a line that I really like. I was like, holy shit. I like this one the most. Just doing some examples in her hair here. See how I can do all these, like I was talking about, how I can do a line, thin, thick, thin, thin, thick, and then thin again. And I can do some of these, um, these examples of this uh, feathering line. Start thin and go thick again. And then, you know, you can have it be black over here and then you can come the other direction to get some cross hatching. So I was kind of surprised at how much I like this thing. And it's not a very expensive brush set. So I use these all the time. It just depends on what part I'm doing, what, where. The one last one that I've got Um, Pentel pocket brush. I, I, I know a lot of artists that, as I understand it, use this exclusively for inking in a lot of ways. It's so convenient to pack around. You get a nice brush tip. And it's just kind of like these other ones that I was showing you, um, where you can get a nice flowing line. Go thick, back to thin again. And you can get some nice snaps out of it. The The thing with these is that they are, um, it's an ink cartridge. It's this thing right here, an ink cartridge that you have to, you unscrew the back of it and you pull out the old one. I think my old one in here is, it, I feel like it's running out of ink, let's see. No, I guess not. I'm completely wrong. But anyway, it's just an easy, convenient way to uh, change out the ink. And it's like wet ink. It's just contained into a brush. So these are fun. Um, it doesn't give me everything I want. Maybe there's higher quality versions of this. This may not be, I mean, I, th I thought this was one of the better ones when I got it. I can't remember what I paid for it. But you can get some really nice, fun lines out of these things and it's a really convenient way to just carry an inking brush with you so that's that one um, the other thing that i've got is um i use these jelly roll pens these white ones let's say like for example if you see right here where this arm and then this line on her chest i went over right it kind of I went over the line, which is fine. You can do that. These jelly rolls, you can just go in there and just kind of touch it up. It's gone. You see how I kind of accidentally went over the border here? Like I can come down here and just clean it up. You can go over your black lines with a white line. It's not a cure-all. It's not great. You can't do big, huge surfaces but in a kind of a single stroke kind of, or just like to say, like this is all supposed to be shadowed, but say I needed to sculpt this black shape, I could come in here and just start kind of cleaning up around the edges. And then I could even make a separation. Or you could go quick and get some texturing out of it. It's not flowing very well. There we go. It just, it's another tool that gives you some flexibility and some options. For me, the most useful thing out of it is like spot cleanup. 
So, and then the one last thing that I was just thinking of is um, when you have to fill in blacks. I don't like to use my good brushes to fill in heavy areas of black because I don't want to be taking the brush bristles or whatever, those tips on those markers and going back and forth on a page. I feel like flexing it and moving them will like age the br bristles or the tip and make it die sooner. So that is why I keep a shit brush. Like this is the one that I was just, um, let's see. I was just using this one, but I have another one with me that's not quite as good. I'll use this to fill in black, or like I said, some of these other ones like this, I'll use these to fill in blacks. Keep those old brushes. I don't use my good one to fill in the black spots. I'll use my good ones to do the lines that I want to look nice, and then um, I'll fill in the blacks the other way. Another thing that I wanted to show, just because it's fun, I, I can't remember, I read this somewhere, and once I read it, I'm like, oh, that's brilliant. Why did I never think of that? Um, getting back to the bottle of ink, I'm going to pull the lid right off. So I got to do a little prep here. I'm going to use my little squeegee thing in here and put a little bit of ink into this little well I have so I can get easier access to it. Just a little drop of ink. Um, I saw, I think it was Dexter Vines on his Instagram page, um, doing kind of a similar thing. Oops, I just dropped some ink and then I, I tried to wipe it and it smudged right there right on my finger. Anyway, Q-tips. Q-tips as an inking tool. Well, what the hell? Well, what I started using it for is I'm going to dip the, just a fresh unused tip of the Q into the ink, soaks it up really well. And um, most of you artists will know what Kirby Crackle is. So you can get nice round shapes. Now, granted, most of these are kind of the same size and you don't want that kind of uniformity in your textures or your Kirby Crackle. So you just take and just kind of go big round like this and then just build up and make those shapes. And what I saw Dexter Vines doing is he was using, no, is it, is it Dexter Vines? I think it is, but he was using this to fill in his blacks and somebody wrote, well, why are you using the Q-tip to do that? And he basically said exactly what I had always been concerned about. He's like, I don't want to use my good brushes to fill in the stuff like this. I, I don't want to waste it. I was like, God damn, like I come to that realization on my own. I always feel kind of happy when I'm like, something that I come to on my own, I hear another professional echo the same thought. I'm like, ah, I'm on the right path, I hope. So there's a way to just get some, a texture, the Kirby crackle. Now again, you gotta make sure you're paying attention to all these dots are kind of the same shape and you can go in with something small and do really small ones and mix it up, but there you go. And I can even have the Kirby crackle go into these feathering lines I was practicing here. So there's some texture. Simple, easy. These Q-tips, I mean, this is the backside one I used before. Once you used it once and it dries up, it's done. Like, but it's a Q-tip. You could buy a box of 10 quadrillion of them for 30 cents. So who cares? You know, I've got a box in my bathroom. I just pull a couple out all the time. So it's a good way to fill in blacks and not um, like aging your good brush tools. And it gives a really fun texture. And again, I know you could do this digitally, but I like to draw by hand. I like giving handies. So, you know, now I could fill in all these blacks. There's some cross hatching in there I could do. I could finish your hair. Um, I may or may not finish this up at some other point. I mean, I haven't, it's just kind of unfinished. I haven't ruined anything. Cause again, I want this basic, same kind of dark crackly look in the corner here. It's gonna be the same way in all four corners. I'll draw in the shadows on the rest of her body and finish it up. But that's just enough. I mean, we're almost going an hour here. I don't know how many people are gonna still be listening to my amateur inking bullshit. But Q-tips, fun. So I, I guess that's enough for now. Um, I, I hope this was interesting to somebody or anybody. Um, for anybody who out there likes to draw and, and does things by hand, like I said, I'm 
I, I'm not trying to say this like it's a big deal, but I'm one of the last few people I feel like that does things by hand. And I just love it. I love touching the ink. It's a therapeutic thing for me. I think art is, anybody who does art would probably agree it's a therapeutic way of just just getting through existence. Like I, I can handle the shit of life all the time, but I only need two things in my life is my children, because I'm not married anymore, so I don't need their mom. She don't need me, I don't need her. But I need my kids and I need my art. And the ability just to sit down and draw and create, even if it never becomes a career, which I'm, I'm like 30 days away from turning 47. So, you know, ship has sailed. Not, not really, but I can still create. I make my own books. Um, I do my own stuff. And I got a little bit of an audience. And this YouTube channel has certainly helped. And it's, you know, it's helped make me a few bucks in that people have watched me and heard about my own works and they've bought my books. And so, you know, this art thing is, it's fun. And... The whole reason I'm going on this little side rant is that I just prefer to make things by hand. And I see the digital work that people do, vast, beautiful, amazing colors and textures and anything in color is always going to get more eyes than this black and white stuff, except for like the diehard people, um, unless, unless you also happen to make a name for yourself. So... I don't know. I like to draw by hand. I like having physical copies of things. I'm going to leave a mountain of artwork for my children when I get old and die. I mean, I'm already old, but when I'm, when I'm dead, I have this hope that they will love the idea of getting artwork that daddy had drawn and wondering what it was for. What was this about? What this is interesting because my dad is an artist. You know, he, he doesn't do anything. He hasn't done anything for decades, but he would draw. He would do charcoal. He'd do pencil. He would paint. He was a musician. He could play the guitar. He would sing and he gave it up. I think life kind of beat him down. There wasn't enough time to, he was always working hard and never quite financially making it the way that would allow a person to pursue a hobby. But I know where my artistic interest comes from. It's from my, my parents. My mother is also an artist. She would draw and paint and play guitar and piano and sing and so the creative gene is in my family my brother who joins me on the channel he's got his own um books and his own works that he does and he's a creative he's a better writer than me by far uh those of you who watch all the time jessica who does the lives with me she does this uh, she's a prolific artist she loves to draw and paint and do all kinds of stuff um she also kind of her artistic expression comes out also in like doing makeup and hair and fashion and clothes, which she doesn't kind of, th I think it's an artistic expression, but she also paints and draws and she's just a creative mind and she gets it. We talk about it all the time. Like I have to do this art. I have to do this and it's fun and I love it. And for me, doing it by hand on a real piece of paper is just more interesting than doing it digitally. But that's just me. I think anybody else who does digital artwork probably gets the same satisfaction. Like I am creating in this tool, this digital device gives me the means to, you know, express this thing that I need to express. So, um, I don't know. That's it. I'm just ranting on about nothing. Just the joy of artwork and what it means and how important it is. So I hope this was interesting. Like I said, I've already said that, um, a little bit of an inking demo. Um, Again, I'm, I'm an artistic nobody, so, you know, there's a lot more places to learn better from. But just sit down and start drawing. Just get some tools. Go pick up some pens, some pencils, and some paper, whatever you're going to do. Just start drawing. You just got to just, there's, there's nothing to do but just practice and figure it out. There's all the, you can do all the learning you want, but until you just start doing it on your own, you're not going to get anywhere. Stop, like, watching videos and start doing, you know. Just, just start making. Just start making and you'll start advancing quicker than you'd think. Um, so next time, maybe I'll get into some like penciling and drawing and page layout, anatomy, that type of shit. Um, we'll see how this goes. Uh, anyway, that's enough. That's all I've got. Thank you for watching. Um, I appreciate it as always. I got several of you people that follow me all the time and I appreciate it. Um, it. It means a lot to me. So that's all. Thank you for watching. See you next time.